Uh, you're not going to be allowed to bring that Haskell's triangle that you've already drawn for your exercises. You're not going to be allowed to bring that into an assessment. So, are you going to have to recreate the triangle every single time when you get given something like 7 or 8 or 9 or something even more awful? The answer is no. So, there's a button on here that I'm going to get to in a second, but I want to generalize for you what is happening here. You know how I said to you, every single time, every single term in the expansion has these one, two, three components, okay, every single time. So let's generalize this. I'm going to say, general, let's make this a little subheading. A generalization is when you take a specific idea or in a specific instance of something and say, what does it look like for any value of this, or any value of this, or any value of that, right? So I'm going to generalize it completely. In fact, it's going to look very similar to this, a plus b all cubed. If I have a plus b, but I raise it to any positive integer power, n, okay? What is it going to be equal to? All right, now every single time you can see there are three components. Let's do the two components that are easier first. If you've got an A and a B, right, you've got an A and a B, you've got some number of these and some number of these, right? So what's the very first term going to have? How many A's will it have and how many B's will it have? This time I start off with 5 and 0, right? In this case, it won't be 5, it'll be N, right? So I'm going to have N of those and I'm going to have, well, I'm going to have none of those, okay? Now that's two of the three components. This third component here, I need some way of describing. There are two qualities that I get this from, right? Number one, there are, how many coefficients are there this, in that expansion? Nothing. There are six of those uh, coefficients. I can see uh, one, five, ten, ten, five, one. Okay. So the first thing you need to know is, well, okay, which coefficient am I up to? Is it the first one or the second one or the third or fourth or fifth or sixth or the nth one? Okay. So number one, I need to describe which coefficient are you looking at? Then, secondly, I need to know, why is it 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1? Why is it not 1, 6, 15, 20, 15? Why is it not that one? How did I know which row to pick? It's because of the power, right? It's this guy up here. So the first thing you need to know is which, which item along the row am I? And then secondly, you need to know which row are you, okay? So here's the way we're going to introduce some notation. I want to say, I'm on the nth row of Pascal's triangle. So I'm going to write the number n. Which of the, um, which of the terms do I want? Well, this is the, in a real way, this is the zeroth term. Okay? Uh, when you think about how many terms there are going to be all up, if I count them like this, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, if you start at 0, by the time you get to the end, there are six coefficients, do you see? And you end on the same power that you're supposed to end on, right? The same one that you started with up here. Okay. So I'm going to say the number zero. These are the two numbers that are important to me. That's what row I am. That's which term on the row I am. And then in between there, we put a C. Now, it's a little bit mysterious as to why we use the letter C. That mystery will be solved by the time we get to the end of this topic. Okay? But for now, I want to show you that notation. There is an alternative way to write it. Maybe you can just write it up here. You'll see it sometimes written without this letter C, but instead with a pair of brackets and the same pair of numbers there. Okay? So the number at the top is, which row of Pascal's triangle are you looking at? And the second number is, which term in the row are you particularly interested in? So that's the notation, and that's just the first term. What will the next term be? Hmm. Which row of Pascal's triangle am I on? I'm still on the nth row, right? That hasn't changed because it's the same expansion. It's got this power and that's not changing midway through. So I'm going to write n. I'm going to write this c down here. And now I'm the next term along. Well, the next term after 0 is the, the, the first term, right? So I'm going to write this and I actually say it as n c 1. Now, what happens to the powers? Do you remember what happens? Look, this is a 4, now this is a 1. So speaking more generally, what happens to the index, the power for A? It's going to be n minus 1, isn't it? It just drops down 1 from whatever it was before. So this will be an A to the n minus 1. How many Bs am I going to have? B to the 1. And that's the whole second term. 
Now to establish a pattern, it's usually customary to say we well, need three terms. The reason why is because if I say to you one, two, dot, 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 you don't really know what the next term is. It could either be three, which would make sense, so it's one, two, three, four, five, or it could be four. What would the next term be if it was four? Then eight, then 16, 32, etc. So only two terms, and this will become very important when we learn a topic called series and sequences. Only two terms, not enough to set up a pattern. You need a third one, so let's just put on the next term. You can help me out now. What's the binomial coefficient going to be? N, C, two. That's just how I read it. Or alternatively, I could write it, and um, you will see me in the future. I will more frequently write it like this, um, partly because I'm lazy and it requires less, slightly less writing, but it's the same notation. You need to be able to recognize both. How many a's will I have? A to the n minus two. Just one less from what I had before. How many b's? Two of them. Okay. Now, this is only the first three terms. I don't know how many terms there are, right? So I just kind of have to say dot, dot, dot until such time as I finish. But it does finish somewhere. This isn't going to go forever. How many terms are there going to be? The number of terms is going to be n plus 1. Because if, for example, it's 5, then you're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms. Okay? But the final term, because I started with 0, the final term in terms of this counting system, if you go 0, 1, 2, just like I went 0, 1, 2, the last one I'm going to call the nth term. Even though if I count them all up, they're at n plus 1. I know that's a little bit weird, but it makes this final term really easy to write. Let me rub this off so I have space. The last term will be, I'm still on the same row of Pascal's triangle. n, c, remember I said, you're going to end on the number that you're supposed to have up in the power, right? So this will be n, c, n. If I had started counting from 1 instead of 0, this would be n, c, n plus 1, which is a little bit weird. Like, I, I want to finish on a nice symmetrical thing. So that's the final binomial coefficient. By the time I get to the last term, how many a's are left? Zero. None of them. a to the 0. And by the time I get to the end, just like here, all the b's have taken over, and I should have exactly n of them. So that's the expansion. Okay.